So I might be just a little addicted to playing Pal World, and uh, if you're here, you might be too. And don't worry, we don't need to talk about it. I'm not your therapist. Um, so not only do I have this game that is consuming my life, I also have this really cool 3D printer that does multicolor printing. And instead of utilizing it for what it was made for, engineering and advancing technology and doing really awesome stuff, uh, how about we abuse it and make some PAL spheres? Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so let's get to printing some spheres. First thing we're gonna need is the 3D files. And luckily, Aguilar Workshop on Thingiverse provided everything you're gonna need. So grab the files, there's tons of options in here. It's pretty cool because he actually modeled a, uh, a mold you can print to, I think, to resin cast it. And I would love to do this with resin printing in a future video to print a green or a, a red or a blue one in a nice, like almost glass-like see-through. But for now, we're gonna be doing FDM plastic printing and just make them nice and shiny. So we don't need to worry about any of this stuff. Get rid of all of it. Um, if you want to print it separate, if you don't have a multicolor printer, you can actually go and print these parts here and then put the supports, put the, um, the gold detail in a different color. He gave you the un, um, unsupported file and then the supported file, but using something like Orca or Bamboo Slicer, it'll, it'll support all of this just fine. But since we're doing multicolor printing, we can get rid of all of this and just leave the two spheres right here. So I currently have this loaded on my X1 Carbon and it, I can get them both to fit on the build plate, but I still wanna scale them down a little bit just for time's sake and I think they'll be a better size. So we're gonna go and drop these down to let's say 85%. That's a much more manageable size and it should definitely help with the print time. We're gonna be doing two things here. We're gonna paint these to do the multicolor printing and then we're also gonna adjust some of the supports on it to save a little bit of material and time. Now I'm still learning the multicolor printing thing myself, but all you're gonna do is go up here and you're gonna add filaments. Now I don't have six color options. Um, I'm gonna eventually do that, but for now I have eight. I just wanna go and paint all of them, but show you how to do that. So the base model is going to be the gold. That's gonna be the, um, the detail filigree around it, the, the, the nice detailing. So that'll be our yellow or our gold. And then the first one up is gonna be the blue. So we're gonna make that one our blue color. So you're gonna go and select your model and come up to here to painting. And it's very easy. This is a very, very good model for this. So all you're gonna do is come over to your fill option. You're gonna select your blue, and then you're just gonna click the entire plane. Now, if you're having some weird issues with it, you can change your smart fill angle to fill more or less. But if you're using the same file I'm using, you shouldn't have to adjust anything. So make sure you go and grab these two little spots that it misses, and that's it. It's painted and ready to print. But make sure you go back and do the other one as well and it's the same thing, and you can just do this with whatever color you want. Now, in my multicolor AMS, in the multi-printing thing, slot one is going to be the yellow or gold, so I don't need to change that, and then I'm just gonna go through and change the blue to the green to the red, however I see fit. And then you can go and just position everything where you need it, um, I would suggest once you load your colors in, make sure you recalculate your flushing volumes and it's just gonna figure out the color swap because some colors need more um, purge to transition into another color. It figures it out for you. It is gonna use a little bit more waste and I know there's ways to adjust that and fix that. I, again, I'm still learning this. I'd rather the print survive than have to adjust um, all of this stuff right now. So this is totally fine. Go through and paint whatever colors you want and they'll eventually look like this. Now you'll notice here I didn't slice the yellow orb. If you go and look at the options of the PAL spheres, there's the yellow and the gold one. Because of the filament I'm using, the, uh, the gold filament I have, it's very similar to the yellow I have. So I'm just not gonna do the, I believe it's the gigasphere, am I crazy? Yeah, the gigasphere, um, which is fine. Now, if you have two very distinct colors, if you have a gold filament and a plain yellow filament, feel free to do whatever you want. I'm just skipping that one because it just won't stand out that well with the colors I have right now. And if you go and print these and you wanna hand paint them, by all means, do whatever you need to. But uh, we're just gonna do these solid colors. I'm not quite sure what the radar sphere is. It's like a darker emerald green. That might be cool to do resin printing in, but for now, I'm not too worried about it. So here are all the colors. And like I said, number one is that gold and I'm just switching the other ones throughout the print. So you're green, you're red, you're pink, you're purple. And I'm gonna split these up amongst my different printers. I'm gonna send two or one or two of them to my X1. I'm gonna send another to my P1S and I'm gonna set up my A1 to print the third or fourth or fifth one. And whichever, I'm just gonna move filaments around. Make sure you're slicing each one and sending it. 
but let's actually talk about the settings now on how to get this to come out eh, pretty decent. So print this with whatever, whatever quality you want. I'm just doing a standard. I'm doing a 5% gyroid infill. There's not a lot of spot for infill on this anyway. And then the supports, you're gonna want supports. I did build plate only. The only other thing I adjusted is if you click one of them, go to supports, I completely blocked out the inside because you don't need to support the inside of the sphere. If you guys have seen me print helmets or anything on this channel, you know domes typically don't need inner supports. We'll leave a little bit of droopiness inside the sphere, but who's looking at that anyway? Who cares? If you want to support it, feel free. This will just save you some time and material. So let's go ahead and slice this. And look at that, 13 hours, 45 minutes for a full PAL sphere in two different colors. And really, really, they all should take about the same amount of time. And that's it. Slice them, send them however you need. And we're going to go get these loaded in the garage and start printing. I'm excited. So this is the Bamboo X1 Carbon. And I'm sure you guys have seen it all around social media. Oh my God, what's the best printer? A lot of people say this. I have other opinions on that. But it is a great printer. And it's honestly overkill for what we're going to be doing. But it's going to work. Now this is the multicolor AMS system. It prints with up to four different colors at a time, which is perfect for what we're gonna be doing. You'll notice I have two of them because I also have a Bamboo P1S. See, there's printers down here. Um, this is the Bamboo P1S. This also came with an AMS system. And this is probably the way better option. You can get a Bamboo P1P or a P1S that does the same multicolor printing for way cheaper than the X1 Carbon. If you're not printing high-end materials, whatever. It's neither here nor there. Anyway, I'm gonna hook my, um, my one of my AMSs back up to my P1S. This way we can have the X1 carbon printing a sphere. We can have the P1S printing a sphere. And uh, Bamboo also sent me an A1 combo. So we're gonna set that up too. So we'll have three multicolor printers going at the same time printing three different spheres. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so the X1 Carbon is printing beautifully right off the bat, no issues. This is doing the uh, blue sphere, and then the P1S is doing the green sphere. I have a special sphere going on two of the K1 Maxes. That's gonna be really fun, and I'm excited to see when that's done. And over here, we have the A1 AMS light combo set up. This was really fun to build. Um, beautiful build quality, good job on that bamboo. However, it is a bed slinger, but you guys don't need to worry about that. Super easy to set up. It doesn't take up too much desk space, and it's really, really quiet, which is awesome. This is the first print I ever sent on it. Literally sliced it, sent it right to the printer, and it is a beautiful, perfect first layer. It does have a weird little poop shoot over here that just flings the filament when it does the color change. That's a problem for later. But we have three spheres going. This is currently doing the red one. And then whoever finishes first, it'll probably be the X1 carbon over there. And then I might swap some colors out. This way we get all the spheres done in a timely manner. But this is beautiful. Here are some awesome time lapse of these printers just doing their best.
So that's them all done, guys. Finished printing all five of them. I actually did cave, and over here on my A1, I am printing the yellow sphere. Um, instead of doing a shiny yellow, I'm just doing a standard, normal bamboo yellow with the gold filament. And it does look pretty good so far. Unfortunately, it won't be done in time for the video premiere. Um, I really wasn't sure about doing it, but these came out these came out perfect. This was a really fun, cool little project. The colors and the silks just, they came out wonderful. I love them. Now, obviously I have some options here. I can glue them together permanently or I can leave them as these little capsules that you could put something in. Um, it would be nice if they had a little locking feature where they did, you know, close together. Uh, maybe I can do a remix on the Thingiverse file or just find somebody else to do that for me. Or if one of you wants to do that, if you like modeling, just a little locking system so they close and just spin together, that would be awesome. And then you can print these in any sizes you want. Um, somebody had suggested uh, Christmas ornaments. I think these would be awesome Christmas ornaments because they don't, if you don't know what they are, they actually look like pretty nice decorations. I will interject that the only downside to multicolor printing is the wasted material. Now there are ways to negate just how much material is used in the color swap, but it is a good amount. I was able to save all of it in these boxes. So this is all the color change for the purple and each one of them, the P1S, the X1 carbon and the A1 all use about the same amount of wasted material. Um, I, I wanna say this was a little under 300 grams and it wastes a little under 100 grams. Again, as I learn more about the color changing and stuff, uh, it, there'll be much less waste and uh, yeah, I just gotta, I gotta figure that out more. So we'll see. And some of you have probably already noticed the giant sphere behind me. This was also really cool and fun to print. Um, I did this, I did this on my K1 Maxes and just one shot at each of them, max size 200%. Uh, the first rendition didn't come out great because for some reason it didn't do support. But this one, this is the size of a basketball and this would just look cool hanging or on somebody's shelf. Uh, if it was a little bit bigger, I could actually fit all of the spheres in here as like a holder. I think that'd be a cool, um, what is like a Russian doll, the doll inside the doll thing. So yeah, this was a really cool project. Um, if you guys have any comments, questions, concerns about anything you saw in the video, drop some comments down below. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. I have a lot more fun videos coming out, aside from the typical cosplay and props and Iron Man and 3D printing stuff. Also, stay tuned for a resin printing tutorial on these. I would love to resin print these in a clear material. This way they actually look like the glass that they're supposed to. Can you imagine a sphere, uh, an actual see-through PAL sphere, and then you have a little PAL inside of it? I think that'd be awesome. Maybe put lights or something in it. Um, definitely some cool options and I'm excited just, I'm excited to start playing around with this stuff. But I think that's enough rambling. As always guys, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day.